Good morning, everyone. Uh, apologies, we were late by 15 minutes, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so vision for the club is obviously we being a part of India where we see so many players being produced. Uh, you know, so the idea is to create a pathway or create a. See, North East United is the only club which represents eight states. It's a big region. Um, at Bangalore FC, you are representing a city. At Kerala Blasters, you are representing a state. But at North East United, you you are representing eight states. So it's a big responsibility, uh, I feel, uh, for for somebody who is at the club to uh, give that representation at a level which it, uh, which it is capable of and which I think uh, it deserves. So I think our goal should be, uh, or is right now, obviously the first team is extremely important and we have to take it step by step. Uh, obviously no pressure on the coaches and the players, but uh, we always want to win. Uh, that's that's something which, which, which we always will keep it in mind. Uh, but it takes time, it takes process, it's a process that we need to follow. But apart from the first team, there are a lot many things as a club that we, we intend to do. Uh, it will be small, small steps to start off with. Uh, but the idea is to ensure that we create some sort of a pathway for all the players uh, from the region. And I mean, again, all the eight states through our academy programs, through our residential academy programs, through our decoding programs, to ensure we are able to contribute in some way or the other uh, in the player development, not just for the club, uh, but I think uh, in a large goal for the for the Indian national team. So I think these are the uh, the broader vision. Obviously, it requires a lot of work, a lot of support from a lot of people in the region for us to be able to achieve this in the times to come. You have been here for quite some time now. Uh, what changes do you see from the start and over the course of the season? What can we expect and the long term as well? I think. Uh, in terms of the expectations, I think we have got a, in the past 3-4 months, whatever we have been here, I think the main thing was to get a right coaching staff in place, uh, which understands the vision, which understands what we want to do. Uh, and I think the step started in April uh, when I had my first call with the owners and uh, we started on the hunt for the for the head coach. <coughs> and uh, with one, uh, we, can, we, can, we were confident that with his experience that he's had over a period of so many years, not just in one country, but I think uh, three or four continents, uh, was something very important for us to, to bring him here. Uh, he also has been in the football scenario in different verticals, not just as a head coach, but as a technical director, as a CEO, as an acad he has his own academy. So I think it somehow or the other felt that what vision we have, it coincides with that. Uh, and hence, obviously, we had uh, one in place. Uh, Musa, obviously, I've worked with him for almost now seven, eight years. Uh, his experience in Indian football, we all know. Um, and I feel what uh, working with him so closely is his his uh, his his advantage is that he he understands the the potential of young players, and he has the capabilities to scout them and spot them and improve them to become better players. Uh, you know, uh, going forward, and we see so many players in. Indian football right now that that are doing well, uh, a, a lot of them are are some way or the other associated with with Musa scouting or Musa training them. Whether it's Ashik, whether it was JJ in the beginning, or even if you see now with Roshan or Shivi Shakti and Bangalore FC, I think so. We, we needed that kind of uh, uh, support when we when we were thinking about the club and the vision that we had uh, when we are we are looking at young talent from the region to develop them and to take them forward. And, and it's very important in Indian football to understand that the transition from from a youth level to a senior level is not very easy. And you need the right people to understand the mentality and what exactly is needed at that level. And I think uh, uh, setting up this staff was very important, the technical staff was very important. And obviously then we have to uh, have the players which, which I feel are the lifeline of any club. Uh, and unless and until we, we treat these coaches and players as our assets, uh, you know, as, as an organization, as, as a club, uh, we will not be able to succeed uh, if we don't have that unity, if we don't have that hunger, if we don't have that mentality of, of fighting for each other. And hence getting individuals who are who are able to bring this uh, qualities was essential for us. And, 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 and likewise we did those kind of signings uh, which we felt would bring those qualities, bring those values to the club. And hence we had a lot of good players. We've got very good young players also at the club now. Uh, you know, there was, Parthi obviously has been with the club from the beginning. Uh, we just know that he's got selected for the Indian Under-23. He played for the Indian uh, Under-23 AFC uh, Asian Cup. 
uh, in, you know, for the under 23. So there are there are good young players who just need the right platform, the right processes, the right systems uh, to put in place for them to uh, <coughs> deliver what we expect and to deliver uh, you know, for them to also uh, show their potential which they genuinely have. So I think these are the small steps that we, um, I mean, we can go on and on for this, but I think these are the first basic steps that I, I, I think was very important for us to uh, to start when, when we uh, set the ball rolling, so to say. Well, good morning again. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was very important, you know, since the last three years, uh, I had the option to come to, to India, but uh, I never thought, I never think to do that step forward to like, I knew uh, John Abraham and Samandar and uh, really and uh, give me that push I, I needed to come. And also one very important point is the region where I'm coming. You know, the team, the representative region, it was very, very important for me because uh, when you study a little bit the Indian football, you find out that the 70% of the players, they come from this region. You know, everybody loves cricket, but this region loves football. And that for me, it's very, very important to, to feel it, you know, uh, that uh, we'll be locked in this area. There's a lot of things to do, and uh, it's, uh, it's nice, it's a nice challenge to work here. Because uh, in the end, the result today, it's hunger for tomorrow, and we need to be, uh, to be good and to, 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 to be doing a good job for long term, not only for today. And the day we leave, to leave something, and I think it's the indicate area, the indicate work and the indicate job, you know. And since I arrived, thanks God, I, I fed home. Now, I tell you the truth, when you travel around, we went to Jamshedpur, to Mumbai, or I just want to go back home. And I'm saying that uh, I'm back home here, you know. And my club, it's my club now, it's my family. And uh, I think everybody has the same feeling, you know, all the players, all the staff, not only the technical staff, medical staff, administration staff, everybody, we feel a family, we are not too many, and uh, everybody is helping and doing things to go in the right direction. I think I did a good, a good, good option, good uh, choice to come to North East. Uh, Mr. Benjamin, uh, this is Abdul Ghani, I'm from Assam Tribune. It's good to have you here in Guwahati. Uh, you have been to Asia before, then in Africa and also in uh, Europe. So now, uh, having a huge experience over the continents, uh, how do you look forward to this challenge? Well, as I said before, it's a great challenge, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, new experience, new adventure, new building a new home, building a new, a new project. Uh, India is, is building a new project with football with ISL and uh, we're proud, really proud to be part of it and uh, really proud to be uh, one of a lot of coaches, a lot of staff and players to develop it, especially here in Northeast. After football, uh, Northeast game, uh, football game development So, our thinking जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि नॉर्थ ईस्ट यूनाइटेड खाली आठ स्टेट्स को रिप्रेजेंट करता है सो ऑब्वियसली हमारी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी बनती है कि हम हर एक स्टेट के तरफ एक ही नज़र से देखें आगे जाके जो हमारा प्लान है वो यही है कि हम लोग हर एक स्टेट में हमने कुछ जगह आइडेंटिफाई किए हैं इन ईच स्टेट इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स द आइडिया इज़ टू स्टार्ट विथ फिफ्टीन डे बोर्डिंग अकेडमीज इन ऑल द एट स्टेट्स ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन एंड ये डे बोर्डिंग अकेडमीज अंडर सेवन अंडर नाइन अंडर इलेवन ये तीन एज ग्रुप में रहेंगे और इनके बाद अभी ये यंग एज में ये बच्चे उनके फैमिली के साथ रहना भी ज़रूरी है इसलिए वो डे बोर्डिंग ही होगा वहाँ के लड़के वहाँ के एरिया में ही रहेंगे और 11 के बाद जो भी अंडर 13 
से हम लोग आगे बढ़ेंगे तो हम लोग एक रेसिडेंशियल रेसिडेंशियल अकेडमी बनाएंगे जो कि थर्टीन फिफ्टीन सेवनटीन और रिजर्व टीम होगा नाइन्टी नाइन ये हम लोग शिलोंग में करेंगे ये रेसिडेंशियल अकेडमी कुछ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ मेघालय के साथ कुछ बात हुई है जिससे हमको वो जगह मिलेगी जहाँ पे हम लोग ये रेसिडेंशियल एकेडमी का सेटअप करेंगे बट कहने का यही तत्पर्य है कि हम लोग हर एक स्टेट से हर एक स्टेट में दो दो तीन तीन जगह पे एक ए बोर्डिंग अकेडमी बनाएंगे जिसका फंडिंग होगा एक रेसिडेंशियल अकेडमी में अंडर थर्टीन में और ऑब्वियसली त्रिपुरा आएगा उसमें अरुणाचल आएगा नागालैंड आएगा सिक्किम आएंगे मिजोरम मणिपुर मेघालय ऑब्वियसली आसाम तो रहेगा ही सो so, ये इम्पोर्टेंट है और यही चीज़ है कि हमको जो करनी ज़रूरी है ये रीजन के लिए टू क्रिएट दिस प्लेयर पाथवे जो मैंने पहले समझाया कि प्लेयर पाथवे यही होता है कि हम उन बच्चों को एट यंग एज में पकड़े उनको ट्रेन करें और फिर उनको एक अगर पोटेंशियल है तो ये उनको एक अच्छी तरीके से एक पाथवे मिले जहाँ पर वो ग्रूम होकर सीनियर लेवल तक आ सकते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट के लिए बाकी के क्लब्स के लिए या ऑब्वियसली इंडियन नेशनल टीम टीम्स के लिए सो so, यही आइडिया है यही रहेगा इसको टाइम लगेगा इसको ऐसा नहीं कि ये क्या तो इमीजिएटली होने वाला है बट इसके लिए तैयारी हम लोग धीरे धीरे कर रहे हैं और ये हर एक साल में से तीन से चार सेंटर्स असम के बाहर असम में पकड़ के हमको हर एक साल में तीन से चार करके पाँच सालों में हमको ये पंद्रह सेंटर्स खड़े करने हैं और ये प्लान है और ये होगा बिकॉज हमारे साथ जो लोग काम कर रहे हैं उसमें ऐसे ही लोग हैं जिनको एक्सपीरियंस है पहले से उषा का मैंने बताया हमारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव स्टाफ में भी दो तीन लड़के हैं रोहित है रजत है जो जो मेरे साथ काम कर चुके हैं बेंगलुरु एफ सी में जहाँ पर हमने ये सेटअप्स अकेडमी के किए हैं सो यही आइडिया है यही प्लान है तो हमको हर एक स्टेट में इस तरीके से काम करना पड़ेगा और हम लोग करेंगे हंड्रेड परसेंट is part in or is yeah, so, so many talented uh, youngsters but i uh, want want to know what is the plan of the northeast uh, united football for the northeast are you go ahead for the i i league is coming soon the i league then are you selected the players from around the northeast na? you get from the outsiders in northeast Your question is: Would we be looking at players from the I League to come into North East? Yeah. Obviously, 100%. We have already done that this season itself. Uh, Falguri, Dinesh are examples which were playing in the I League, which we were, which Wan uh, and Musa, when we started in April, uh, when the I League was still happening at that time, were were looking at these players and and, and accordingly these players were were selected. Samte is one of the players which was playing for Trau. Uh, we had. Uh, 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 Falguni was playing for Srinidhi. Dinesh was playing for Srinidhi. So the idea was definitely, and will always be to, to try and scout for talent from the I League or even the I League Second Division for that matter. Or now we also hear the IFF is planning to stand uh, to start the organizational teams uh, where where government organization teams uh, league will be started. Uh, we were we played against I think in the quarterfinals against the Army team I think, and there were one or two players which we felt uh, were good, and we were looking at. Having an opportunity to sign them, so so talent can be from anywhere. It, it doesn't have to be only from the ISL. Mm -hmm. It can talent can be in the I League, can be second division I League, can be even at the youth I League level. There are many players at the youth level, the under 17 youth I League also, which uh, which are which are performing well. Uh, I think the Reliance Development League is another such competition where you can uh, identify and scout talent. So. Scouting talent is throughout the year in every competition, so not just I think, but I would say all such competitions that happen in India. Even the even the world of of many sports, even the most yeah. uh, football, yeah. so essentially, are uh, in the in the tourism sector. Okay. How can we promote? So, uh, so the idea is uh, uh, we know that the Shillong Stadium had an artificial turf, and I think that turf is getting converted to natural turf, and hopefully. I mean, Durand Cup one group was supposed to be held in in uh, Shillong, but because the infrastructure was not ready, it did not happen. But I believe by December uh, is when the infrastructure would be ready. And with whatever conversations we have had so far uh, with the government of Meghalaya, uh, our plan is to see if we can uh, at least have two matches uh, in this year of the ISL, uh, latter part that is post December. Uh, Two of our home matches to be played 
uh, in Shillong, uh, provided the ISL also agrees because there's a lot of uh, requirements for television, broadcast team, production team to, to manage these things. But we are in talks with the ISL to try and support us for that. And if the infrastructure does get ready by December, uh, then uh, I'm confident that we'll be able to play two of our home matches uh, in Shillong. And uh, hopefully the next year we can even reach out to maybe Itanagar or if the situation in Nupal gets better in Nupal also. So the idea would be to reach out uh, to play our home matches because been keep, uh, we have all been repeating the same thing that we represent a larger region and not just one city or one state. So I think it's important for us to, to, to try and uh, you know, reach out to them also. So it's definitely, hopefully uh, this year we will be able to play two of our home matches in uh, Shillong. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm Sri John from Sportskida. My first question would be for Musa. Uh, you've had a fantastic run in with Bengaluru FC, you know, coming to Northeast United had its own set of challenges. So first of all, how similar is your role here compared to Bengaluru FC and what are the challenges that you know you have to overcome here? See, first when we started talking about my me coming here, so I was uh, in I was talking to Manda sir about uh, like we wanted to we wanted to move we wanted to move on and then the first thing we were like which club so we just we just came out that we just decided that this is one region which where we can do a lot of work there is lots to do here because you have eight states and if, uh, if you see most of the forget not most, most of the club all the clubs in the country all the clubs and even academies they come scouting to Northeast. And we as a Northeast team, we have not really done much work. So it was, it was the best challenge for us and to really take this uh, opportunity to work and see that you know, how, much, uh, how much we can do here. You know? And then uh, the gentleman, he asked about uh, whether we work in the program. So with that, I would, what I would like to say, you know, with Bangalore FC, we are winning everything. You know, the league, second division, development league. So same way, the media asks the question, why there is no local players in the team? You know, so I ask them, uh, you name one player, I will send them. Because they come, they come watch the league, and they didn't have the answer. They didn't have even one player to recommend. So, very important that uh, what Manda sir said, we need to have a pathway. You know, that's when we started number 13 in Bangalore FC. And then, now if you see, we have around 20 to 25 players from Bangalore in the youth setup, under 13 and under 15. Before, we didn't have even one. So now, I guess what I want to say, it takes time. So you can say we just started this year. So as a journalist, it's very important you keep supporting the team. You know. So maybe another four, five years, maybe even ten years. Now, now also the senior team don't even have one uh, local player. It will take time. It will take another maybe four, five years. So that's that's how it is going to be. And you know, the best part is uh, with uh, one. Uh, I get a lot of support. A lot of support in the sense I have. Few, uh, right now we don't have uh, the reserve team, uh, we don't have enough players now. But whatever players we have, so he's the one who's giving them opportunities to train with the team. And now in the World Cup also few players got that opportunity. So it's a very good thing that I have this support. I work very closely with him so I understand uh, what is needed. So accordingly I prepare the meeting. So that, that really helps. Challenges really, I, I, I find it same. You know, it, it's, it's always the same working with the players. You know, just developing them uh, the way he wants the senior team to play. I see that you know, this kids in the B team, they try to understand what the senior team wants, want and when they go there, they are there. Okay. Uh, 
my next question is from uh, we spoke in May, uh, and then uh, you mentioned your work scopes and everything. Now you've seen the Duran Cup here, you know, and let's be honest, the fan turnout for the team for the last past few seasons were not group great. Now this year you have a even delayed kickoff time, which will hamper travel arrangements for the fans here. So, what are your views regarding the turnout in the stadiums on Sunday? I think that is something which we need to really address it well. Uh, it obviously starts with the team doing well, uh, not just on the pitch but off the pitch also. Uh, we have to get that trust back from the fans. Uh, I mean, I remember uh, when we were, uh, when I was at Bangalore FC and we were playing Northeast in Bangalore, uh, there were more fans for Northeast than Bangalore at that point of time. So the fans are always there in every part of the country from the region. But it is for us to ensure that we do the things correctly, uh, for them to have the trust to come back. And obviously with regards to the late kickoff timings and the challenges that's going to be there, I think uh, the team is working with the, with the government of Assam, uh, with the transport department to see if we can organize different ways where the accessibility to the stadium after the game, more importantly, is, is easier. And I think uh, there have been uh, some good help from them where they've been flying more buses uh, to ensure that the fans are able to reach uh, back home, mainly post the games. So I think these are certain challenges which we have to uh, you know, try and work around with. But at the end of the day, if the team does well, then let the stadium be anywhere. You will see supporters coming in. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the responsibility of all of us here and outside to ensure that we do the things correctly on and off the pitch uh, for the fans to have something that they want to cheer for. And, and that's a challenge and that's an opportunity which I think is, is something which we are looking forward to. Uh, hi, this is Abhinav Pradhan for Sikkim Chronicle. My question is for Michelle. Um, obviously last season was about to forget and with new players coming in, a lot of new players coming in, a lot of players left and a new coaching staff as well. What is the spirit in the dressing room like and the aim for the season, like the realistic aim for the season? Hi, uh, this is Joyanta from the News Mill. My question is uh, for Mandar. Uh, Mandar, uh, uh, what are the line, learning spot at club uh, in the last 10 years and uh, what are the things that you want to focus right away that uh, these are the critical points that we need to change right away? So what are the things that you have identified? For me, uh, I would not like to speak on what happened in the last 10 years because I was not there so it's incorrect on my part to you know talk about that. Uh, but I think uh, what I feel and what I believe in is that you have to treat your players and your staff as your assets. Unless and until you treat them as your assets, they are never going to give you your 100%. So it's important that we create an environment which is conducive for everybody to perform, uh, where everybody wants to punch above their weight, so to say. You know? And it's not very easy. Uh, you need to have a lot of good characters uh, within the dressing room. You need to have a lot of leaders within the dressing room. Michelle is one of them here, we've got Musa, we've got uh, one. So you need characters who can lead the team in that way. So so the primary focus when it comes to just the first team is to obviously have a good technical staff, you know, who, who are able to deliver or who are able to uh, get the best out of the players. And then obviously you have to create this environment, you have to ensure that the, the, that the, the players are well looked after within the limitations that we have as a football club because looked after means there's there's no limit to it so so within the limitations how good you can look after the players you can look after the staff so they're comfortable to create that winning mentality it's all it's all up there you know so so that is uh, in my past experience it's very contagious like if, if, if even if you're not doing well as a team 
how you can uh, keep everybody together and, and 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 work together is something which is which is very easy to speak but is very difficult to to make it as a practice or make it as a habit so i think that's that's the basic thing in terms of the first thing that we need to do uh, obviously every player is is good it's just creating a good environment giving him the right kind of support for him to, to flourish and i think as a club uh, that is our primary goal uh, to start off with and then obviously there are many other things that that can go on but this is i think is the main focus area which we have tried to address in the in the first two three uh, first two three uh, months of the uh, of the pre season prior to the pre pre season also it's important to to support the coaching staff with with the with the kind of uh, i would say technology that is needed uh, to help them uh, get the necessary things you need to have the you just seeing two people here from the from the technical staff but there is a uh, strength and conditioning coach there is a goalkeeping coach there is an analyst so there are a lot of people who 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 are behind the scenes who do a lot of hard work uh, for the players to be comfortable uh, for the coaches to have a lot of support to ensure and i think that's the kind of environment that's the kind of teamwork that that we are we are trying to uh, trying to address Yeah, uh, we have seen that North East United lacks continuity uh, most of the time uh, in terms of coaching staff, in terms of players. Uh, we have seen uh, our, uh, I mean, um, some of the best players going to other clubs and performing really well. And uh, North East has uh, a very good scouting team, I would say, uh, because um, a lot of players from outside uh, the country as well as uh, from the country itself. Uh, they are play. They play for North East United for one season and then leave. So, how do you think that uh, you will be addressing that problem? As say, and uh, do you or uh, do you feel that that's a problem for the club as well? Uh, see, that's a problem for for everyone in world football. You know, the best players are taken by the biggest clubs, financially biggest clubs. I would say so. So that's that's part and parcel of sport. Um, at the end of the day, you always want your best players to stay. Uh, but we have to be practical about it. We have to be professional about it. If somebody has to gets a better offer, see at the end of the day, as a club, we cannot be selfish about just thinking about ourselves. But at the end of the day, we also have to look at the success of the club. And if if it means that we need to keep somebody for so-called breaking the bank kind of a thing, the club will do that. Uh, but it's about supporting the players. It's about uh, Ensuring that if such good players do leave the club, we have got a backup of players to come, uh, especially in Indian players and having through the ranks, uh, so to say. So I think it's a process which will uh, take some time to to develop in terms of the player development pathway is concerned. But otherwise, there are enough and more players I think in the region, outside of the region, for us to to ensure that the uh, team will uh, have a continuity of good players. But even if you see the current signings, that new signings that we have done, they are for three years, two years, three years. So there is a bit of continuity that we have. The younger players are even for three and four years. So we are trying to build that continuity. Uh, probably in the past, the players were only signed for one year. You know. So so I think it's a process which will which will which will work out with time. Uh, my next question uh, will be for you as uh, uh It's about the financial health. You you were saying about finan uh, financials. So, how's the financial health of the club? Because we all we always hear outside that the financial health of the club is not that great. Uh, that's why we are. Uh, I mean, uh, we are not able to sign uh, top players or retain top players, basically. So, do you think that that is uh, something that you are working on personally as well? And I say this with very, very humbly. The fact that I am here at the club. Is good enough for you to understand the financial condition of the club. I mean, <laughs> that's the best thing I could put it. So, and I say it with a lot of uh, uh, being being humble about it. But I think there's no such problem if at all you're good. We all get our salary on a given day. Even not now. Even in the previous years, everybody was even before. So everybody <laughs> has been getting the salaries even on time. So I don't see that as a problem. But at the end of the day, it's it's about spending money wisely. It is spending money. to ensure that you get value for your money it's not about just spending the spending money uh, yes there are clubs in the past that i was where i was i had one of the best players in india playing for for bengaluru fc uh, but it's not about the money it's not about the thing it's about building a good environment even when we started at bengaluru fc we didn't have the best players we had only sunil and robin singh at that time with the national team players and after 10 years we had almost seven players 
from the national team out of which six were the starting 11 players so it's a process that you slowly build you know uh, but when we started there were players who were not known or they were the players which were probably the 20th or the 25th player in those respective clubs in 2013 so i don't believe in in in, in that thing i think quality is there uh, it's value for money um, you may look at a certain goalkeeper who might be paid 2.5 crores you may have certain goalkeeper who might be paid 15 lakhs that is huge difference in the money but is that difference in the quality of the actually give on the ground is something which we all should know and we all have to gauge about it it's all about demand and supply you know today somebody wants somebody there's no market people say it's the market value i don't believe in the market value if i want somebody and i need it i can spend whatever money i want to get him so that's how it works so the financial situation i think i've answered that question uh, and uh, nothing like that so yeah i just have last question for coach uh, uh so well, we have seen uh, um, in fact uh, yeah we will have some uh, break this time uh, we have uh, a few games here then we'll have a long break of around 15 days then next in november also we'll have a long break of around 20 days so how will you keep the players motivated and uh, will you be uh, interested in having uh, friendlies with local clubs here so that the larger perspective of as we say that northeast united needs to reach out to other uh, states as well so can that be fulfilled also the players will get a chance to uh, participate in a uh, proper game well it's not a chance it's an obligation we try that every, every player in the first team gets the maximum of minutes possible. In this moment, we are around 85 minutes each player. They played, uh, played I think, uh, three or four, four friendly games. And uh, we try that everyone arrives in, to the best, uh, to the next, next game. The problem we have, yeah, now we have uh, three games in a row, then we stop for, for a week and then we start again. In that week, we need to give some day off, of course, but after that we need a friendly game. We need that everybody be ready. We never know, there's football, and injuries, uh, bad performance, uh, a lot of things happen. And we need everybody to be prepared. In this moment, I think uh, we have 23 players, and the 23 players are ready to play. And that's. Uh, they were all in the same minutes, same performance. Uh, anyone who goes inside, we know, is, is ready. But after we need to do some friendly games, and we wish that we can do with the, with the teams around the, the, the region, that we can see players also. That's one of the, of the reasons also. Good morning to everyone. I'm from Manipur, and I represent Manavar Delhi. And my question is uh, to Mandar Sar. And uh, as you told, as you announced that uh, there will be 15 day boarding academy to all the eight states uh, in Northeast. And uh, uh, and we are very, I am very pleased to hear that kinds of uh, uh, words from the Northeast United FC. And my question is uh, uh, this. Uh, project will be initiated from which time? Right now for us, the first priority is obviously the first team and the ISL. So we have started with that. Uh, now once we settle into the first couple of games, then I think we'll have enough and more time to uh, execute a few things that we already have identified. The cities or the districts or the states where we want to be first, uh, which includes uh, Guwahati and Assam. Um, obviously, Sikkim is something which will be in, in the next step that we will do. Uh, we have a plan identified for Manipur because you come from Manipur. Uh, we have a coach also identified there, but with the situation, circumstances, I don't know when we'll be able to execute that because that's an area uh, where we know a lot of talent comes in, uh, not only in Northeast but also the whole of India. So I think that's an important state for us. So I think, as I mentioned, uh, before the end of the 31st of May 2024, where the season ends, uh, we should be in a position to start three or four of these centers uh, in Assam and in the neighboring state uh, to start off with. If we are able to do more, great, uh, we'll be more than happy. But minimum three to four 
uh, centers is where we plan to start uh, these programs uh, by the end of the first season. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. My name is Gaurav and I am from India today. I would like to know about how do you plan to improve your attacking and defense tactics considering, considering the fact that uh, last season our team has considered more goals than we have actually scored. So, how do you plan to improve this and what are the other areas that you are working to improve considering the performance of the team in the last ISL and the Durham Cup? I'm not a coach, so the coach can answer this. This is open for everyone. Well, uh, as we know, all over the world, the team who concedes less is a champion. That's everywhere, not only in India. And to build the house, we don't build it from the top. We build it from down, slowly, slowly. And that's what we try to do every single training, every single meeting, every single game. And I think in this moment we arrive to, I think, uh, I'm not sure the percentage, but we are about around one goal point two point three per game. And still for me it's too much. We need to go down that 0 0.8 goal per game. If we do that, I think uh, we can succeed. This is, this is our our target, and uh, of course, uh, some games we can do it. Some games maybe not. But this is our aim: to be very, very strong defensively. But at the same time, the chance we get, chance we, we, we need to, to to score. But as as Mr. Mandar said, this is a long process. It's uh, we've been here today. I think is the 57th session. It's not only training, counting games and everything. Even meetings we counted. It's 57 since we are here. And uh, it's too low. We need, we need time and this is, um, uh, this is one, one, one question, not question, something I'm, I'm asking you to do also to, to, to send the message to, uh, to everyone, to all our friends. As you say in Hindi, Sabar. This is, this is not for today. We promise work, 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 and work, but we need sabar, sabar, and sabar, and everything will come. If you ask us to be champion today, I think like a uh, gentleman say, we will be in the World Cup. I need, we need objectives, more, more serious objective, very short objective, and the shortest objective for us is next game, 24th of September. Okay, that's the most important for us. Then we will think a little bit further. Okay? Okay. You must have identified the player's uh, strength and weakness by now. Can you tell us what are some of the areas that we need to improve? Uh, that's the first question. And the second will be, uh, since you are going to be the North East United, it is going to be clashing with the Mumbai City on 24th. Uh, how are you preparing for this? Are you confident you will bring what, what I would like to say is you know, every coach who comes in, he has his philosophy. He has something in mind, this is how my team is going to play. So no matter which player he has. So for now what we have done is, uh, we have got the foreigners, the foreign signings, to see uh, they can adopt to what the coach wants, the head coach wants to play. And even the Indian players, what, uh, there are few who are already there and there are few which we signed this year. So it takes time, as I said, summer, summer. So it takes time to, for any team to adopt to a system. You know, he said 57 sessions, right? It's, it's low, it's less, right? We need more time to, for the players to understand the way we want to play. So again, uh, it's a process, it's a process how the team is going to see. Uh, how the team will understand what, what the coach really wants. So again, it, it, it will take some time. For the second question, uh, you know, if we think we're not prepared, it's better not to train just to go home, you know? And uh, it's only one thing, very important. 
video buildings fell down. Okay? And we are Northeast. We have a good players. We just need one thing to believe. If we believe in us, if we believe we can achieve, we will do it. I'm sure Mumbai will not come for here for holidays. I will prepare not to receive them inside the field like holiday people. There will be a nice game, a good game. I think it's the best team we can play against to show, to see and to understand where we are. Okay? And uh, our league will start after that game. But the first game, it will be a big, I hope it will be a big day, big fest. And uh, I'm sure that all the players and everybody will be up smiling and proud after the game. Michelle, you're bringing your experience to India. You applied your trade all this time in Spain. You in your country. What are your observations with the squad and the team you're playing so far? And what, what potential do you see here? <coughs> I, I, as you say, it's my first experience abroad. Uh, I always say good luck. Uh, I wanted to to come to a new experience. Uh, I have uh, friends who are playing here or who, who played here. And, uh, all of us uh, say the same thing that it's a great uh, league, a great country. <coughs> and uh, I think that uh, I was right uh, in my decision. In, in the pitch, I I'm feeling uh, very good. Uh, I think that we are working the uh, right way. Since I arrived uh, two months ago, I think that we are improving a lot. Uh, staff are working very hard uh, as uh, process uh, year by year, step by step. And I think that uh, uh, we can do a good game uh, against Mumbai. Uh, we know that they they were uh, champion regular league last season, but uh, we we know how to to win in and we will try. Good morning, coach. Uh, my name is Tathagat Patacharji. I'm from G Plus. So I would love I would like to start off by saying that uh, welcome to Assam. So you said that you are pre preparing for uh, Mumbai FC and uh, this year's Duran Cup, like we saw a great set of skills, new improvements, fresh improvements from the team. So on that note, I would like, uh, like to ask you, like, what are like the strengths and weaknesses that you have observed in the opposition team? And uh, based on that, like, strategically, what uh, are you bringing like, to the table? I'm sure. <laughs> before, before he answers, both the coaches were in Pune. I come from Pune. So they were in Pune to watch Mumbai City FC play against uh, the uh, club from uh, Iran for the AFC Champions League. So you can talk about a lot of weaknesses. <laughs> no, no. Come on. It's a strong team. It's, uh, it's one of the best teams in India. Uh, uh, for me, they deserve to win that game against the Iranian uh, team. If it's not two or three mistakes, they did. But uh, I prefer to... They have some weaknesses. We have a lot of weaknesses. And uh, I'm not going to share none of them with anybody. <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, really, we're working hard uh, to, to try to, to, to stop their, their, their strength and to, to use that, uh, our strength against that weaknesses. That's a chess game. I would hope it would be nice to see you on the 24th. Thanks, Steve. Good morning, still. Uh, okay, my question would be you've seen the Duran, you've played the Duran, you know, with your main team. You've also got a chance to see other teams play. According to you, leaving Northeast United FC aside, what are your top four picks for this season? What are the teams, top four teams that you believe? Leaving not this United of CSI. You know, the truth, it's a long season. Uh, and, and a very short, short uh, list of, of teams. We're only 12. 
you win two games, you're up, if you lose two games, you're down. It's very, very difficult to say who is the best. It can be very good in Duran and start very bad the season. It can be a very strong team and suddenly you don't know why uh, something happened, uh, they will be losing. It's very difficult, very difficult. Each one, and uh, how can I say, a lot of coaches in this moment, they're playing, as I say, chess. They show you something and they want to do something else. Some teams they play in three back and they play with four after. Play with two strikers after they play with one. Uh, depending on the stress you have, uh, you lose two games. The third game you're so stressed that you play another way. You know, for the moment I think we can say who is who will be up, who will be down after four or five games. After the fifth game we can say yeah, those ones have the chance to be playing for the. We have the the big example is uh, Bengaluru last season. Uh, the first half of the season they were disastrous and in the end they were finalists of, 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 of the playoffs, you know, you never know. This is why I cannot, uh, we're not fan, you know what I mean, we cannot say exactly what, what uh, who can be the champion in this moment. Okay, thank you. My next question is for Parthi. Okay, the English, English, Swiss, okay, I'll stick to English. Uh, Chinese now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, uh, you're the local lad here, you know, and now the focus is completely on you, you know, you're making headways, you're you know, showing your potential truly. Does the pressure affect you on the pitch? Okay, and you know, you had a fantastic durance season, you know, you're scoring hat tricks and all, and then, you know, the pressure with, their, with, with the you know, expectations that are there, you know, what do you expect from the team this season? We will fight for a trophy, first of all, and, uh, and we'll take, we will take uh, every matches, like, we will step by step, we'll go. Uh, we will first, we will uh, concentrate on the first game. It's a very important game, and uh, and like coach said, uh, like coach said, no, like, uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, my question is for Miguel, Senior Miguel. So I so I'm here. Um, you obviously coming from Spain, such a massive footballing country, right? Um, what do you see in India that's setting Indian football back? Like, what is there in Spain that is not in India? Uh, have you made any observations? And if so, like, what kind of improvements can we make? Uh, I think that uh, in professional football, I think that ESL is, is growing, is uh, making good things, uh, it's improving. But maybe, yeah, for example, there's no many kids that play football in Spain, in every park, in every everywhere. Uh, you can see kids uh, playing football or I don't know in the school, but in, in, in every school in Spain, uh, you can see it. Um, and for example, I know that in North East, uh, it's very famous for football. So maybe in the future, as uh, Anders said, in five, ten years, if they are working in this, and maybe in the future, in North East, uh, it will, will appear uh, a new. 20, uh, 20 players, for example, or, or many players from this, but it's a long way. It's not uh, one year or two years. I will, I will just, you know, I've been in Japan. I've been two years in visa COVID. And uh, in that time when I was in Japan, everybody was asking the same question. And they start working. And after, I think, nearly 20 years, mm -hmm. Now, we have famous Japanese players all over the world, you know, starts with Nakata in Parma, and now you have Kubo, you have many players playing. Of course, India is in the right way. India is in the right way, and I hope Northeast can be also a uh, piece and part, important part for this. Okay, just to, to have mentioned that. 
क्रिकेट तो मॉडस्टर एक बड़ा उसको हम लोग कुछ कर नहीं सकते बट दे डिजर्व इट बिकॉज दे उनका उन्होंने जिस तरीके से स्पोर्ट को ग्रो किया है इंडिया में तो वो पूरे विश्व में सबसे बेहतर स्पोर्ट्स माना जाता है हम लोग जो आईपीएल के जो अभी टेलीविजन डील की बात करते हैं तो इट्स अमंग द बेस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड इट्स आपका एन पकड़ो एन पकड़ो इंग्लिश प्रीमियर लीग पकड़ो इससे भी ज़्यादा उनका टेलीविजन राइट सोल्ड होता है सो दैट मीन्स इट्स वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट ग्लोबल स्पोर्ट दैट वी हैव इन द वर्ल्ड रही बात फुटबॉल की uh, मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि हम लोग फुटबॉल के लिए फॉलोइंग है इंडिया में बहुत फॉलोइंग है लेकिन ज़्यादा करके जो बच्चे हैं वो यूरोपियन फुटबॉल फॉलो करते हैं uh, उनको मालूम है डिमार सऊदी में गया है मेसी यू में गया है रोनाल्डो सऊदी में गया है बट हमें इंडियन प्लेस कहाँ जा रहे हैं इंडियन प्लेस क्या कर रही है ये ये फॉलो करना ज़रूरी है जब हमारे इंडियन फैंस इंडियन प्लेयर्स के बारे में फुटबॉलिंग फैंस इंडियन प्लेयर्स को फॉलो करना चालू करेंगे तभी वो स्पोर्ट ग्रो होगा आप अगर फुटबॉल देखते हो तो फुटबॉल इज प्लेड ओवर टू कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड और क्रिकेट खाली आठ या दस कंट्रीज खेलते हैं टेस्ट क्रिकेट बाकी अभी जो भी छोटे देश खेल रहे हैं वो अच्छी बात है बट अगर इतना बड़ा स्पोर्ट ग्लोबल पे खेला जा रहा है और इंडिया का इतना बड़ा पॉपुलेशन है तो हम लोग को इतना पोटेंशियल है ये स्पोर्ट को ग्रो करने के लिए एंड आई थिंक इसमें बहुत से लोग का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ज़रूरी है गवर्नमेंट है फेडरेशन है क्लब्स है प्लेयर्स है स्टाफ है सो आई थिंक इट्स वी आर द राइट ट्रैक बिकॉज आई रिम्बर मैं दो हज़ार दस ग्यारह में इंडियन टीम का मैनेजर था तभी हम लोग हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फिफ्थ रैंक थे हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फोर्थ रैंक थे और अभी हम नाइन्टी नाइन टू हंड्रेड एंड टू के बीच में फ्लक्चुएट कर रहे हैं सो है थोड़ा चेंजेस तो हो रहे हैं स्लो चेंजेस हो रहे हैं ये चेंजेस ज़्यादा होने ज़रूरी है हम लोग सोचते हैं कि हम वर्ल्ड कप कभी खेलेंगे बट इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि हम एशिया में टॉप टेन में पहले कैसे आएंगे कंसिस्टेंटली कैसे आएंगे ये छोटी छोटी चीज़ों पे अगर हम लोग कॉन्सेंट्रेट करेंगे तो इट्स ऑल अबाउट सर्टन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव डिसीजन ऑल्सो दैट नीड टू बी टेकन इन द राइट मैनर आई बिलीव फॉर द स्पॉट टू ग्रो इन आवर कंट्री बट पोटेंशियल बहुत है बहुत पोटेंशियल है उनको तो उसको अच्छी तरह से खाली एक्सप्लॉयट करना है क्रिकेट भी अगर आप देखेंगे पंद्रह बीस साल पहले ये लेवल पर नहीं था जो आज के लेवल पर है उनके एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स ने उनके लोगों ने कुछ डिसीजन अच्छे लिए हैं जिसकी वजह से ये स्पोर्ट इतना ग्रो हुआ है तो आई थिंक फुटबॉल ऑल्सो इज़ ऑन द सेम ट्रैक मैंने थोड़ा एक रिसर्च बीच में किया था कि अगर आप टीम स्पोर्ट पकड़ते हो इंडिया में और अगर आप क्रिकेट में आईपीएल छोड़ते हो आईपीएल अगर आप छोड़ देते हो तो अगर रणजी ट्रॉफी है दुलीप ट्रॉफी है या बाकी के टीम स्पोर्ट्स है फुटबॉल या और जो भी है तो फुटबॉल एक ऐसा खेल है जहाँ पर जो सैलरीज प्लेयर्स को जाती है वो सबसे ज़्यादा है इंडिया में आई को छोड़ के आई पी आता है तो कोई बात कर नहीं सकते हम लोग बट अगर आप क्रिकेट भी देखते हो आई छोड़ के तो और फुटबॉल का उसके साथ कंपेरिजन करते हो वो नंबर्स कम है मतलब ज़्यादा सैलरीज लेने वाले प्लेयर्स का वॉल्यूम कम है बट इट इज़ अ स्पोर्ट दैट इज बीन पेड द मोस्ट टीम स्पोर्ट इन इंडिया सो पोटेंशियल है ऐसा खर्चा हो रहा है बट ग्रोथ होनी भी जरूरी है उसके लिए फैंस का सपोर्ट जरूरी बहुत चीज़ें उसमें साथ में आने आने के लिए जरूरी है बट आई थिंक वी आर ऑन द राइट ट्रैक थोड़ा और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टाइट हो जाएगा थोड़े से और अच्छे डिसीजन मेकिंग हाईएस्ट लेवल पे हो जाएंगे तो आई थिंक इट इज फर्दर ग्रोथ थिंक एक ही चीज़ ऐड करता हूँ कि सब लोग बहुत से फेमस है सब आपको भी मालूम है कि एवरीबडी सेज एट इंडिया इज ए स्लीपिंग जाइंट यू नो तो सब हम लोग बात करते बट दैट जाइंट नीड्स टू वेकअप नाउ यू नो इट्स हाई टाइम दैट वी वेकअप एंड start doing things rather than just sleeping so hopefully you know we we, we do the things correctly thank you